Lesson 9.3, welcome grade sevens. It's all about the Iron Road. How did building the Canadian Pacific Railway affect the growth of Canada, especially that of Western Canada? So stick around and let's learn something. Nine point three is the lesson. How did building the Canadian Pacific Railway affect the growth of Canada? This is a great lesson. It's all about building the Iron Road. Now that we've got the Northwest Mounted Police um, in the various parts of the Northwest Territories, which was formerly Rupert's Land, which will eventually become Saskatchewan and Alberta. The land is now secured. So now we're going to strengthen Canada. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going we're gonna to do that in, in a couple of different ways. And this is what is going to happen. And Prime Minister McDonald, John A. McDonald, he comes up with a three-pronged policy. And this is in 1878. He calls it the national policy. And he's using this to secure the land and to use the land effectively. So what do we need? You need three things, population system, or sorry, transportation system, increased population, and we need a economy, an economy um, to help the growth of the West. So for the transportation system, this is going to be our railway. We want to reach the various resources that are out there. We want to encourage immigration to harvest said resources, and we want an economic policy to nurture those resources. And McDonald is saying that everybody is going to benefit from adopting the national policy, is what he is saying. So we need to find the route first for the railway. This is our transportation policy. So we need to find a route first. It's three years after Canada becomes a country in the 1870s, they begin working on the Transcontinental Railway, a railway system that is going to span the continent of North America from east to west. The goal of doing this is to bring British Columbia into confederation. The Canadian government promised that they would have a railway built within 10 years of BC joining Canada. So work begins right away. And the railway crosses thousands upon thousands of kilometers. And these are full of swamps and uh, just forested areas. We've got grasslands, which is going to be kind of easy to build, but then there's mountains and we have to go over rivers and all that kind of stuff. So we know this is going to happen. So what does the government do? They send out surveyors to find the best route to get from Eastern Canada through the Rockies and into BC. So the first route that was proposed here on the map was the northern route on the map here this is in blue winnipeg saskatoon edmonton then down to vancouver so this proposed route is going to go northwest from winnipeg to edmonton and is going to cross the rockies through the yellowhead pass hopefully you have heard that before if you've traveled at all you'll you'll know about the yellowhead trail yellowhead highway the second proposed route was to go south, Winnipeg, Regina, Calgary, then Vancouver. So Winnipeg to Calgary, crossing the Rockies through the Kicking Horse Pass. And there were some advantages to going south. The land was flatter. That's going to make things a lot easier to build. Lethbridge, um, which is uh, down southeast of Calgary, had large coal deposits. So that's going to be good for our trains. It was closer to the U.S. border, which would mean that the people living on the prairies would be encouraged to use this railway because it's further south than using the one that's going to be south of the border. Uh, the railway company already owned a lot of land that was already down there, so it only made sense. And although they were later proved wrong, scientists in the area said that the southern land was better suited to farming which later is uh, shown to be false. So we're building the line. So they hired a private company to build this line in stages, and they used investors to raise the money for this line. 
and is estimated that each one kilometer of track cost about a half million dollars. Like that's just, that's mind blowing. Okay. And we can see here, we're going to start in Northern Ontario. So we're going to start on the right hand side of the map. So workers blasted through the solid rock of the Canadian shield. They filled in the soggy areas. And unfortunately, though, they were dealing with mudslides. There was a lot of mud there. So it was really difficult to build in northern Ontario, but they got through it. They hit the prairies. They thought the prairies were going to be really easy. So they worked day and night. They laid up to 10 kilometers a day. That's a, for back then, that's very impressive. The supplies were brought forward each day along the tracks that they built the day before. So smart for them. That's, that's awesome. And then out in the distance, workers built bridges to cross rivers, rivers and gullies so that when everybody else was laying down the track, the bridges were ready for them. So it was a really quick and seamless process. So the prairies turned out to be a pretty easy place to build. In BC, in British Columbia, they started in Vancouver and they made their way east into the mountains. Others were starting in Calgary, and then they went uh, west into the mountains. The line ran along steep canyon walls, dark and high, uh, dark tunnels, and high passes. If you've ever been to the mountains um, and you've seen the trains that are going through the mountains, you can see and only imagine what they were going through. Unfortunately, BC was a very dangerous place to work, and hundreds died because of falls and rock slides and explosions as well. So what's the impact of the railway? Well, building of this railway was probably Canada's biggest impact. They brought so many new people out to the West and it forever changed Canada and the face of Canada. And this brings us to the first Chinese immigrants. The Canadian Pacific Railway had a shortage of workers because in BC, this was an extremely dangerous job to do. And the four years between 1881 and 1885, Canada brought in 17,000 Chinese workers and they were paid $1.50 a day. So half of what other workers were making. Everybody else was making $3 a day. Chinese workers were making $1.50. Not only that, where they only making $1.50 a day, they also had to pay $4 a week for a place to stay and for food as well. Okay, so they're not making a lot of money. They're coming here because there's going to be a promise that they will be able to bring their families in to Canada and have a better life for them. The Chinese that came over, they were earth movers and they were dynamite layers. In all, about 700 Chinese workers died building the railway for Canada. The reason they, they, they came here is so that they could stay in Canada. And many of them actually did that. Many of them did stay in Canada and they became Canada's first Chinese immigrants. 1880s is when they started coming over. The railway though was kind of divided. There was some, some pros and some cons to building the railway. So let's take a look at some, some positives. So if you're in BC, you are in favor of, well, you might be in favor of the railway because this was an agreement from the Canadian government for BC to join Confederation. If you are a shareholder of the Canadian Pacific Railway, you're finally making some money. If you are an Ontario farmer, you can now move west, which is going to be good. So which means you can grow crops and then you can sell them by using the railway. If you are a manager for a manufacturer in the east, now you can move your products west. If you are a BC logger, now you can sell more lumber. And what do we use lumber for? To build our homes in these new prairie towns. If you're a miner, while well, the trains need coal, how are you going to get that coal? You're going to mine that coal. So now you have jobs, but there's also some negatives, some, some negative opinions about the railway. So some of them could be coming from the prairies and some residents on the prairies felt that it wasn't fair because the CPR, the company itself received so much free land from the government of Canada, but the residents 
were struggling, so they felt it unfair. A prairie farmer might feel that it's unfair because the Canadian Pacific Railway was charging a lot of money to ship their goods. And the government at the time wouldn't allow any other railways to be built into Western Canada, so they were forced to use the CPR. The CPR had a monopoly, which you know what that means from previous chapters, and they could charge basically whatever they wanted. And if you were part of the Cree First Nation, you might think that um, the railway is a negative because it's bringing in newcomers into Cree territory. That is your traditional territory, and there is going to be um, disagreements, there's going to be violence, and everything associated with that. So some pros and cons about the railway coming in through the prairies of Canada. All right. Head over to your notebook and complete the questions for this part of the chapter.